Yasha. In today's lesson, we will take another look at the important technique chemists use when reacting an acid and an alkali. Now remember that when an acid reacts with an alkali, a neutralization reaction takes place. When doing a titration, we add exactly enough acid to neutralize the alkali. This gives us an end point of the titration. Do you remember how we defined end point? An end point of a titration is when the reactants have been used up and only products are formed. Now this end point can be detected using an indicator. The indicator changes color when the last drop of acid is added to the alkali solution. At the end point, we can read off the volume of acid and alkali used up. We use this data to do a simple calculation to establish the concentration of the acid or alkali. I asked you to do one of these for your task at the end of our last lesson. How did you manage? Check your answer with me as I work through each step. To start with, let's look at the question again. Hydrochloric acid neutralizes a solution of sodium hydroxide in a titration. 24 centimeters cubed of 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid and 16 centimeter cubed of the alkali is used. Calculate the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution. Step 1. Write a balanced chemical equation. Sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid react to form sodium chloride plus water. Step 2. Show the ratio of moles reacting, which we know is 1 to 1. Step 3. Apply the formula N equals C multiplied by V to find the number of moles present. From the question, we calculate the moles of acid present, which we know is 0, 5 mole. Our volume is 24 centimeters cubed. Remember to change the units of volume from centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed. We now have 0, 5 mole multiplied by 0, 024 decimeters cubed, which gives us an answer of 0, 0,012 mole. Step 4. Use the ratio to find the number of moles of the unknown. We found the moles of acid to be 0, 0,012 mole. So since the ratio is 1 to 1, the number of moles of alkali must also be 0, 0,012 mole. Step 5. Calculate the concentration of the unknown using C equals N divided by V. Our number of moles is 0, 0,012 mole divided by our volume which is 16 centimeters cubed. Remember again to change the unit of volume from centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed like we did in step 3. We do this by dividing 16 centimeters cubed by 1000 which gives us 0, 0,016 decimeters cubed. We then get an answer of 0, 0,75 mole dot dm to the minus 3. Here we have found the concentration of the sodium hydroxide and our task is complete. Now, a titration can also be used to prepare salts. So, if we look at our calculation from the task we have just completed, we can see that this titration should yield exactly 0,012 moles of sodium chloride. Of course, we may want to convert from moles to mass. 
Do you remember the formula to use? Of course. Mass is equal to number of moles multiplied by molar mass. The molar mass is found by using the relative atomic masses from the periodic table. So, in this case, the relative atomic mass for sodium is 23 and the relative atomic mass for chlorine is 35,5 which gives us a total of 58,5 grams per mole. So, the mass can now be found. Our number of moles is 0, 0,012 mole multiplied by our molar mass which we now know is 58,5 grams per mole. So our mass is 0, 0,7 grams. That's really amazing, isn't it? We can actually calculate the mass of salt we will find before we even do a titration. Before we continue, let's take a quick look at today's outcomes. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to calculate the mass of salt formed during neutralization and carry out an investigation to find the end point of a titration without using an indicator. Now, if we want to prepare some salt, we don't always want to add an indicator to find the end point. You see, when the water has evaporated, the salt and the indicator will both remain behind in the evaporating dish. This means the salt will have a stain and not be pure. So how can we get a pure sample of salt? Think about it. Hmm, maybe John can help us here. Hi there. There are actually two ways to solve our problem. What you need to do is to do a chemical calculation before you start the titration. I've just completed my calculation here on the board. It's now time to do the experiment. In order to prepare 0,5 grams of sodium chloride, I'm going to need to add 85,47 centimeters cubed of this hydrochloric acid and then add exactly the right amount of sodium hydroxide to it. So let's open up the burette and get going. Now I need to add the alkali. Here we go. We need to add 47 42,73 centimeters cube. We're almost there. Two more drops. And I've done it. We've added exactly the right amount of acid and alkali. I'm now going to take this solution and pour it into an evaporating dish. I'm going to leave this evaporating dish here for a while so the water can evaporate. Oh, the water's all evaporated and I've left behind with some wonderful white salt crystals. I'm going to scrape them out and use the triple beam balance to find their mass. I think I've got all of them, most of them. Now let's check the reading. It's just less than 0 0,5 grams which is less than what we expected, but that's because of experimental error. I might not have got all the crystals, and this scale might not be measuring accurately enough. But John, you said that there were two methods we could use in order to get a pure sample of salt. What's the second method? It's really quite simple. It's something you can easily do at home. When you add an acid to a base, there is an increase or decrease in temperature very close to the endpoint. So when there's an increase in temperature, there's an exothermic reaction. When there's a decrease in temperature, we call this an endothermic reaction. Do you remember what those terms mean? An endothermic reaction is when heat is absorbed. An exothermic reaction is when heat is released. 
I've asked Megan and Mpumi to do this experiment here. We have some hydrochloric acid in the burette and sodium hydroxide in the flask. I want you to run the acid into the flask one centimeter cubed at a time. After each time, will you please take the thermometer reading? Right, won't you turn on, open the tap and run some acid in? Okay, take the reading on the thermometer. And remember to record your results in a table. Carry on, the next one, run some more acid in. Run some more acid in. Swirl it around. Let's take a look. What's the temperature reading? Take the reading. That's great. Well done. Megan and Mpumi have just finished collecting their data. They've tabulated it and they're, now they're plotting a graph. But John, we've completed the experiment, we've plotted the data on our graph, but we still don't know how this helps us to find the end point. Let me help you here. From the graph, we can see that the temperature changed the most after we added three centimeters cubed of acid. Notice the temperature went up from 22,5 to 23,5 degrees Celsius. This big change in temperature indicates that the endpoint lies between these two points. So if I want to show the endpoint in the graph, I show it like this. Now you can see from this graph that we need exactly 3,5 centimeters cubed of acid to neutralize the sodium hydroxide. But of course we're going to need to repeat the experiment so we can measure out that exact volume of acid. Thank you so much for your help today. I think it's time to go back to the studio. Bye. Now I'm sure you found that experiment quite interesting. But I'm wondering how you can do the same sort of experiment at home. Let's take a look at our task for today. Here is a set of instructions for you to follow. Dissolve two teaspoons of sodium bicarbonate in about 100 centimeter cubed of water. Add 25 centimeters cubed of vinegar to 25 centimeters cubed of water to dilute the vinegar. Use a thermometer to measure the temperature of the vinegar. Add one centimeter cubed of the sodium bicarbonate solution. Stir the solution. Measure the temperature and record the reading. Repeat this until the temperature changes. Plot a graph and find the end point. I hope you have fun doing this task, but remember to report back to your class on any unusual observations you may have noticed. Until next time, goodbye. Yeah.